you'll recall back in, um, well, this was months ago. This is February 4th. So this was like at the beginning of the year. I did a long and extended rant based on this article that Gideon Rockman wrote in February of this year, 10 months ago, called The Shadow of 1914 Falls Over the Pacific. And, you know, pointing out that World War I, we still don't know what caused World War I. I mean, we know that it started when Archduke Ferdinand was assassinated in Sarajevo, but nobody's really sure why World War I happened. You had the, the, Britain was the greatest naval power. Germany had created the largest land army. They started developing a powerful navy, which was making the British very nervous. But the British and the Germans were having trade back and forth between each other. They were major trading partners with each other. Uh, so anyhow, Rockman, back in February, says... The, uh, the idea that the great powers of today could never again stumble into a war as they did in 1914 is far too complacent. And what he's talking about is the conflict between Japan and China, which has gotten much, much worse in the last few months, the last few weeks, actually. Keep in mind, this was 10 months ago he wrote this. Uh, they're, they're fighting over these islands and disputed. Now China has made this airspace thing. And uh, he said, the idea that great powers of today could never again stumble into a war as they did in 1914 is far too complacent. And, and he talks about how, you know, our agreement with Japan to defend them if they're attacked means that if China and Japan get into a war, that we're in a war, which means that instantly it's a world war. And then who's going who's gonna to ally themselves with China? And this could spread really rapidly. Like, for example, if Iran allied themselves with China and then Saudi Arabia decided to declare a war on Iran because they're friends of ours or whatever. Which, by the way, raises a whole other piece. But anyhow, the, the Washington Post yesterday, or day before yesterday, on the 14th, Saturday, published a piece by Simon Denyer and William Wan essentially saying the same thing. Uh, the U.S. government has complained, it's the title, U.S. complains to China after warships narrowly avoid collision. Actually, it's not saying the same thing. It's, 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 it's documenting something that is a piece of this. The U.S. government has complained to Chinese officials after one of its guided missile cruisers was forced to avoid a collision with a Chinese warship in international waters in the South China Sea. And then Margaret McMillan wrote a piece in the New York Times last Friday titled The Great War's Ominous Echoes in which Margaret Macmillan says, you know, basically that now is the time to think again about those dreadful lessons of a century ago. Like Wilson at the end of the 1914-1918 war, Mr. Obama is dealing with a partisan and uncooperative Congress, similar to that of the British Prime Minister in 1914, Herbert Asquith, presiding over a country so divided internally that it's unwilling or unable to play an active and constructive role in the world. Key powers had weak, divided, or distracted leaders. Today, America's president faces a series of politicians in China who, like those in Germany a century ago, are deeply concerned that their nation must be taken seriously. All these parallels. And in the crash of 2016, I write about how the crashes are usually followed by a war. Now, my hope was that we had reversed the order. We had the war, Iraq and Afghanistan, and then we had the crash. And that's, and we're done with it. But maybe not, because it really wasn't a world war.